I'm Pastor Monica, one of the pastors here, and uh, Reverend Amy Spivey is going to give us a wonderful message about promises this morning. So let us prepare our hearts and go together in worship.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was broken on the cross for all sins and all of humanity, and who shed his blood that we might have life and life eternal. And so, Lord, draw us into your presence this day. Help us to experience your love. Draw us in to receive this free gift that you've given us. Grace upon grace. And Lord, draw us in to your presence so that we might surrender our thoughts and the prayers of our hearts to you this morning. Lord, we come into this place, some of us carrying the world our shoulders, and others carry what we feel like nothing. And then there's the in-between. And so God, we give it all to you this morning. Those habits and hang-ups that we cling to that draw us away from you. And our cares and worries about our children, where we want to pick up the pieces for them, but Lord, we know that we can't. And Lord, we bring to you those hard crossroads in life where we're having to make decisions and not knowing where to turn. We have to look to you for guidance. So Lord, we bring those prayer requests to you. We bring to you the health concerns of our friends and our family and our loved ones and even for ourselves. tell us to come to you all who are weary and heavy laden and you will give us rest. And so Lord we pray for rest and peace for those in, at those crossroads. Those dealing with those health concerns. And Lord we lift up our world. There is so much on our news stations and there are many hurting in a variety of ways. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you. And, Lord, we pray for hope for all those that we have mentioned in this time together, whether spoken or not. Because it is your hope that you provide for us. It is hope that you have given to us through Jesus Christ. It is hope that you remind us of and the promises found in the word. And so, Lord, help draw us into a time of hope. Help us to remember this day as Amy brings us a message of not only promises, but of hope. And so, Lord, as she brings your word to your people, we pray that the words of her mouth and the meditation of her spirit ever pleasing in your sight, that they may pierce our hearts in a new way that we might be expanded, that as we breathe in you, we breathe out grace and peace to others. And so thank you, Lord, for drawing us into this space, but setting time to be with us. So, Lord, help us to be present in all things and in all ways as we worship you this morning. And we pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Well, good morning. It is great to be back. Thank you to Marie for leading us and opening our hearts through music and Monica for uh, sharing that prayer. And we are so uh, just privileged to be together for worship. And I'm glad to be back and know that I had a bit of an interruption last week. Um, Having been in quarantine, I am well. Um, I fared very, very well, thankfully. And um, and am delighted to be with you today. Um, I'm thankful that um, my dad is worshiping online. Um, he goes where I go on Sunday mornings. He just does it from High Point. Uh, so um, I know, Dad, you're online. I just want to give thanks for that connection for him. Um, also, um, I am. I'm aware my my husband, who is also a United Methodist minister but doesn't serve a local church, is uh, dabbling in the world of Presbyterianism today. Uh, So he is preaching. um, So so Tim and Laura Clare are with the Presbyterians today, and um, he is in a little community called Cleveland, which is just on the other side of Iredell County and Rowan County. So Anyway, they, they will be among us, I assure you, but aren't today. But I'm just so thankful that uh, we can connect in different ways. And, um, and after last week, I was so aware of the giftedness of this community, of everyone who rallied to, to make sure that, that things were covered, uh, to Jean Gay for having spoken and given a message of promise from Psalm 103, Um, I worshiped online. Um, I also worshiped uh, for Greg Knight's service as well. So I know that in the midst of grief and sadness, we really made a connection in worship of celebration of life. And I was not with Greg in ministry here, but I know that he made a difference here and in many other places. So I'm just grateful that I could connect that way. And it's just good to be among you. You know, one of the things I keep doing every day is it feels like I'm orienting and reorienting myself. Just when I think I have it, then I don't. You know that feeling when you're constantly having to pay close attention to what's around you because you're not sure if that's the door you're supposed to go in or that's the road you're supposed to drive. Just the reorienting and orienting myself is, is a, a, daily, a daily part of my routine. And someone told me last week that, that I'm not new anymore. So I can't keep saying I'm new. So I'm not new anymore. I've been here uh, more, than a, more than a month now or almost a month now. So I'm just grateful that I can find my way and reorient and orient myself among you. And I'm so excited about that. It is true that we have to pay close attention when we are finding our way in new places. Uh, We have to look at the signs more clearly. We have to pay attention to things around us because it's not second nature yet. Now, when you drive down my road, the the road where we're living um, near Troutman, uh, you, you'll notice right away there's a, a, a sign that says dead end. So if you turn down our little road, that sign's going to tell you something, isn't it? It's going to tell you that it will not enable you to pass through that road to anywhere else. That sign dead end tells us something. Now I'm also thinking about the fact that we are experiencing a, a proper winter Yet I'm still kind of dreaming about springtime. And you know, very soon those little daffodils are going to start popping up out of the ground. All of a sudden we're going to wake up one morning and the daffodils will be peeking their heads out. Right, because that tells us something as well, doesn't it? It tells us that the season is about to change. If, if we pay attention to those kinds of things, then we know that, that they are going to tell us something. 
right? There's signs all around us, maybe in symbols and images and scenes and pictures. And the common importance of all those signs is, is that they convey meaning. They tell us something that we need to know. So today I want us to think about what it means to, to be aware, to see signs, particularly a sign that comes to us in Scripture. And it conveys a very important and significant meaning for God's people. And it's a sign that comes from Genesis 9, 12 through 17. Uh, this passage is telling us of when God reminds Noah about the covenant. So let's hear this particular passage today, beginning at verse 12. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set a bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word and we pray that it would fall afresh upon us today. That you would open our hearts and our minds and our lives to the hope that you have put before us. Lord, we pray this in your holy name. Amen. So the Genesis, or beginning of the story of God, tells about God's faithfulness in creation. And the narrative for today ushers us into a conversation between God and Noah. Maybe you remember what comes before this. The ark, the animals, Noah and his family the flood, the 40 days, and the dove. Like many cultures throughout history, a flood story holds prominence for Judaic tradition, representing God's desire for faithfulness in, in a loving relationship and God using Noah to be a vehicle for repentance and new beginning. Now, what we do know for sure is that water is powerful. And that is represented in this story because in the case of the flood, the earth is washed clean, removing all that hinders and damages and severs and distances God's people from God. And it reestablishes new life. Right? It's a new beginning for God and for all of God's creation. So it's in this powerful symbolism of the flood that we meet God, instructing Noah about the rest of the story. This is the sign of the new covenant, says God. I've set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign so the rainbow becomes a sign of what God has already promised, a commitment by God to love and to be faithful. Now, scholar Terence Fretham thinks this way about the rainbow. God did not create the rainbow for this moment. It had existed but was now filled with new significance for the future. When God sees the rainbow, God remembers the covenant. The bow serves as an important sign of God's ongoing, deep commitment to life and creation. 
Noah, in a sense, is standing on the threshold of new beginning, of new life. What Noah knows and what we can know today is that God remembers the promise of restored and ongoing life and will not forsake God's creation. Simply stated, God's people don't need to worry. God is with them. We do not need to worry. God's love and compassion will not falter. So Noah gazes out onto an unknown future. And the rainbow is a sign that God will remember. You see, God is ever faithful. And that's a sign of hope. Right, as, as uh, Terence Fretham said, God's ongoing and deep commitment is true. It remains. It does not falter. And that tells us that God loves us. Now this is a sign of hope. This is a reminder that, that God puts before God's people more than they can see for themselves. I don't know about you, but a reminder of hope seems very timely. Being reminded that, that God sets out in faithfulness and love the promises for God's people, there is there's hope in our midst. Not only do we need to hear it, but I, I believe the world needs to hear it. I had a friend tell me recently that, that she was so overwhelmed by the things that were happening in the world that for a short time she just had to turn it off, to, to check out in a sense. And there probably are times that that is, is appropriate, times when that's appropriate. However, I think that sometimes if we are not paying attention to what is happening in the world around us, we might forget just how much the world needs to know the hope of God. Right? So that's hope for us, but also hope for the world. And if we are reminded of that hope in the sign of the rainbow, then maybe we can claim it and live it and share it with a world that needs it. Right, just this week I, I noticed so many things within the world where hope is needed. Right, just hearing the stories and the struggles. I think about the tragedy of a young woman from Charlotte, right, who seemingly had everything. And somehow, Chelsea, Chris, Miss USA was in deep despair. Maybe, maybe we've felt that kind of despair before, been in a, a place of depression, or, or maybe have experienced something even more with ourselves or someone else. And I pray today that if you or someone you know is, that, that, that you would come and share it with someone right in the place of deep despair? How do we offer hope? And I think about this image I saw on social media that was calculating the school years in the pandemic for students. 
and that a kindergartner and a first grader today has never experienced a consistent and predictable context of education. Right? How unsettling that can be and the, the teachers and the people within our schools who are now beginning to step into year three. Right? That's, that's been hard on so many of us and on our young people. So how is it that a message of hope is needed in the midst of that? I think about the story that I, I, I couldn't get away from this week that, that gripped my heart. And that is the, the tragic and orchestrated effort and threat on HBCU campuses, historically black college and university campuses. I hope you didn't miss this story this week. But it's heartbreaking to think that there was an orchestrated effort at all targeting those campuses where, where students are seeking to learn because of the deep-seated racism that, that plagues our, our communities. There is a great need for hope in the midst of, of that circumstance that's, that's happening in many different places. These are just stories that I've heard this week. And, and I believe that the message of God has something for us and for the world. And we see it in the sign of a rainbow. That when life is hard and humanity is, is overcome with tragic mistakes and difficult circumstances and the burdens that so many bear, that maybe something as simple as the rainbow for the people of God might be a beautiful sign, a reminder that there is hope, that God is with us in the midst of the struggle, that there is more on the other side, just like Noah stepping out, gazing into an unknown future, but knowing that God promises new life, right? It seems as though on the other side of the rainbow is something more. I think about when Dorothy sits with her dog Toto in the film Wizard of Oz and sings somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams you dare to dream really do come true. You see, Dorothy in this iconic film is looking into the distant sky and yearning for more and expecting that there is something for which she can dream. And it lies on the other side of the rainbow. You see, for Dorothy, the rainbow bends towards hope. The rainbow bends towards hope. And I wonder today, as we see a world around us that's hurting, a world that needs hope, and as we look ahead to a future yet to be revealed. Maybe we can see that rainbow as a sign of hope. I'm comforted to know that God remembers God's ongoing and deep commitment for all of creation. 
Friends, there is hope. If you hear nothing else from me today, hear that. There is hope. And we're doing all that we can in this season to grasp it, to claim it, and hopefully to trust in it. It's a pivotal time for St. Luke's, and, and I'm privileged to come and to be here serving alongside you as in such a time as this. And if there's any time that we need to remember hope, it's now. Because the world needs us to bear that hope and to share that hope. Now we're embarking on a time when we are, we are discerning and visioning, right? Our visioning initiative and our, and our capital campaign coming alongside that to undergird it are significant for us as God's people, as people who see signs of hope. We're taking bold steps in order to share the good news and to reach new people for Christ. And there are people that need that hope who are not here and not online today. You see, we want others to know that there's hope. So we have a vision initiative team who's prayerfully seeking God's guidance on our behalf. And I think it's important for us to remember in the midst of that work that the rainbow bends towards hope. You see, God is with us as we stand on the threshold of new life in ministry, as we claim faith-filled community. We not only can see that hope, experience that hope, but ultimately it is our responsibility to share that hope. So as, as we seek direction together, I am thankful that God is ever faithful, that God loves us. And in that, we have hope that no matter where we go and what we face, God is there. And we're looking out into a horizon with a future that hasn't yet been discovered, but we know God goes with us. Let's know with confidence today that God remembers. The rainbow is a sign for us, and it conveys to us that there is hope. Now, I invite you to share your prayers in this time of future thinking of hope, claiming we can lift our prayers and trust that God is with us. And as we think about what the vision is going to be and how God will use us to share the good news and reach new people for Christ, let's also lift up that visioning team. Now, in the February newsletter, if you haven't already received it, it's coming. If you don't get it, if you're a guest with us or for some reason it doesn't come to you, let us know. We want to make sure you get it. But that newsletter includes a message from me that lists the names of the people who are discerning and prayerfully committed to claiming a vision of how God will use us looking out onto that horizon. Lift our brothers and sisters up who are a part of that. And know, know that God is in the midst of that work. So today, let's be reminded of the hope. The hope of God who is ever faithful. The hope that God is with us and that God is with the world. We may very well be uncertain 
as to what the future holds, but what we know is that God will lead us. Let's trust like Noah beyond the flood. Let's trust like Dorothy who dares to dream. Let's hope that there is new life to come. And that in that new life, hope will be revealed and shared and known to a world that desperately needs it. And may it be so in us and through us. Amen. As we share in worship today, we will also share in the sign that is before us of Holy Communion, reminding us that in God's love, God came to live among us. And so through Jesus, we have life and hope. So I pray today Holy Communion will be a reminder to you as we come to share in Holy Communion, I would just want to offer a a few reminders. Um, I first want to uh, remind you there'll be two stations. And if you've done Holy Communion before, then you're two steps ahead of me because this is my first time. But what I do know is there's two stations. The other thing that I know today is that um, I come to you as a person who is uh, lives a very strict gluten-free lifestyle, and I do that for the the my health um, and because I have to. And so, what we are trying today is to provide gluten-free bread to everyone. So, what you will receive today is a piece of gluten-free bread. And um, I have tasted a lot of gluten-free bread, and I promise this is okay. I promise. So receive it um, with gratitude and um, trust that it is okay. As we join together for Holy Communion, we do that knowing that um, God invites all of us to share in Holy Communion. And even if you're worshiping online and you can find a piece of bread, we welcome you to do that as, and if, as we share Holy Communion this morning. And so know that all are welcome at the table. And so hear this invitation this morning as we open our hearts to God and pray together words of confession this morning. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with your whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, You are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. I invite our ushers forward for the giving of our tithes and offering. As we worship together, let us consider how we can give back to God.
many years. Gene serves as a board member and is also involved with the Hope Center. The Hope Center is an arm of the soup kitchen that helps our clients gain employment and assist with transportation needs. I recently spoke with Austin Pierce, the executive director of the soup kitchen, and asked if there was anything he would like me to share with the congregation. Without hesitation, he said that St. Louis was one of the reasons the soup kitchen never missed one day of serving our communities hungry and homeless during the pandemic. And I would like to express appreciation to our members who volunteer not only to serve, transporting resources to the kitchen, and our church host, Steve Spiden, who prepared the meal during this trying time. We lost a lot of volunteers due to the shutdown, which put a large strain on our operation serving upwards of five, 300 meals five days a week. On January 28th, the Soup Kitchen held its annual spaghetti dinner. I'd like to thank those who purchased tickets supporting this event, helping raise approximately $10,000. Spaghetti dinner is the only fundraiser that the Soup Kitchen holds. We hope to reopen the dining room soon. At that time, more volunteers will be required. If anyone is interested in volunteering, please reach out to me to discuss the opportunities to serve. Again, I'd like to say thank you for your support for this vital, fruitful ministry in our community. invite you into the great thanksgiving. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. May you lift up your hearts. Do it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed 
and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. As we have come to worship today, we have been received by God. And we before us have set a table so that we might share in the blessing of these gifts. Be reminded that there is hope in God. The table has been prepared and is ready. We invite you to come. You invite those who are serving. Please come forward.
Let us pray this prayer together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord.